Welcome to a Venom Blog Live, where we're going to do a quick tour. Sorry if I'm blurry. That's uh, weird. Okay. Uh, maybe I just have too many lights on me. Yeah, okay. That's probably what it was. Uh, what's up? Um, sorry, I'm still figuring out new setups and everything like that. And, uh, and I'm now going to click on here to see if I can pull up my chat. So that way, in case anyone pops in. I can see you at least while we're here, but then we're going to get up and walk around and I'll try to, you know, pay attention to the screen here and see if I can't uh, keep up with uh, what's going on. If anyone shows up, this was supposed to happen about an hour and a half ago. And uh, just with everything going on today, I've had um, just, uh, I had to run out. I had a, I have a, so uh, what is going on with the, come on, man, what's going on? There we go. Maybe it's had to clean my lens. Or maybe there's just so many lights. I have a lot of lights. Some in the background, some in the foreground. I think it's just too much. Um, let's turn this light on and see if that helps. Keep me in focus. Uh, all right. Yeah, I know. I'm a noob now. Um, it's like I've never done a live stream before. Uh, so anyway, um, yeah, I've had... So this apartment complex weird. They made me pay for a mailbox. And then, and like three weeks ago, I paid for it. And it was like... 40 bucks or something like that and uh and they were like oh we'll, we'll deliver a key to your the you know the front office at your apartment and you'll you should get it like in a week and it's been three weeks and i have not gotten my key to check my own mail <laughs> so i have no idea what's going on with that um so i had to go try to figure that out today and uh and then i had to go get some groceries and just things like that just nothing major but just all that and then they're supposed to be coming in and fixing stuff in my apartment that wasn't fixed when i moved in and I've been waiting and waiting and waiting and they were going to come and then they were like, oh, maybe we'll stop by like round one. So I was like, okay, now I can't live stream at one. So I'll wait for them. And then they still haven't shown up yet. So I'm just like, screw it. We're just going to go live. And if they show up, they show up. They can work in the background or something. Um, but all right, I should be able to see chat now if anyone's here. Thank you for the two thumbs up for the people who popped in real quick. And uh, and we're going to, we'll get started here uh, with uh, kind of the room tour. Um, so first and foremost, we have... What's up, Eric Lopez? How's it going? Yeah, adulting can be hard. It sucks when it all rains on you at once. Uh, but uh, but I'm, I'm we're getting through it. It's just uh, it was just you know my days off are never days off anymore, right? So I think that's when you know you're really uh, getting into the adult stuff is when uh, when your days off just aren't days off and you got a lot of stuff to do. Um, so yeah, that's that's the area I'm in. I think I've been there for probably like eight years. But um, lately, it's just been a lot. What's up, Tevia? How's it going? I was just uh, lurking on your channel a little bit earlier. You and uh, Black Tastic. There was a couple of people I've been meaning to catch up on. So while I was waiting for these uh, maintenance guys, I was like, yeah, hey, you know what? I'm going to watch some friends on on, uh, on YouTube and stuff. So I'm glad I caught some of your videos. So first and foremost, uh, the recording area, which um, you'll see me <laughs> on there on the screen. But I decided to put all my Transformer stuff over here. And I have this little cool box down here where I can add lights, subtract lights. Um, there's a lot of RGB going on here. Got a new mouse, new keyboard, uh, new uh, mouse pad, uh, essentially, which just covers the whole desk and lights up and changes colors. Um, so uh, yeah, and then that light also helps light up some of the figures. So anyway, this is Cybertron. I figured when I'm recording, we'll call it Cybertron and uh, I'll be at Cybertron Station um, you know, to, uh, to record my YouTube stuff. Um, and some of these ideas and stuff you'll see around here are not, they're mine, but they're not mine, if you know what I mean with the my um, my recent di diagnosis, my recent diagnosis. Um, there's stuff like this, like, I didn't even know what pegboards were, um, but apparently, apparently I, I didn't know I knew, but a part of me knew, so they decorated stuff. So I collect uh, Kindles. So I have a bunch of Kindles. Um, this one's signed by Tim Sale, drawn a Gwen Stacy on there. And I think that's like the second Kindle or third Kindle. I can't remember. Um, right when it became color, like because before it was just black and white. So that was the first color Kindle, I believe. And then so these are all my Kindles that I have out. There, there's a couple other ones I have somewhere. But I think I have like six out of the nine that exist. So yeah, I'm, I'm weird like that. I collect uh, Kindles. You're welcome, Tevia. No problem. Um, and then all the sound pads. So before in the old place, when we hung up the sound pad, and you'll see, you'll hear Ace a lot here. He's down here. Hey, buddy. How's it going? You're on screen. Everybody sees you. They can hear you breathing like a crazy man. <laughs> um, you know, we had these just like a dual-sided tape to the wall. 
But uh, so I think we watched a YouTube video where someone said, get a big piece of cardboard and glue them to the cardboard and then hang the cardboard on the wall with like nails. Um, so that's what we did actually. Um, in fact, we used thumbtacks, uh, so we didn't even use nails because I wanted to minimize how much damage I do to the walls here because I spent about three days patching holes in the last apartment because I hang so much stuff up. So all this stuff you see hang, hung up is probably gonna stay like this for as long as I can. Um, I'm gonna try not to adjust too much. But anyway, so this way we block out a lot of the sound in the area and prevent from um, you know, um, sound bouncing around. Plus we have carpeted floors. Uh, this is Ace's bed behind me while I record. And we'll get back there in a minute. That's uh, called the green room. Uh, essentially, it's my bedroom area. This is a studio apartment, so it's essentially one big space open up. Um, so yeah, so you'll you'll see when we when we go around. Um, Eric says, "Is it that old thing, uh, Tiger game I was hanging on?" Yes, uh, this is an X Men Tiger game. Um, it's a re a re release version of it. Um, they have a Transformer one out and like a Spider Man one. There's a couple out there, um, but yeah, we have the X Men one, and uh, so yeah, uh, Green. Uh, you know, he 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 did this. This is his stuff. Uh, he puts green stuff on a lot of things. So um, like the little end tabs here. So anyway, and that's like an external hard drive, and we got our Nintendo uh, DS. Um, so just things like that. Our Xbox controller, because our Xbox is right here. Um, right there, sorry, uh, right down there, boom, um, hooked to our TV, which we now have, um, RGB lights behind the TV, so then now there's like a, uh, you know, backlighting, so when we watch movies and stuff, it's easier on our eyes, so, uh, so we got some stuff there going, um, uh, did you see that, what's up, Sake? how are you, how are you, Mike, how's it going, your channel's who I have to stop by next, I went by Blacktastic and Tebias, I gotta hit Rashad's and, uh, Anthony and you. So, uh, so after I do this live stream, we'll, I'll probably go and watch some of your videos because I'm still waiting for the maintenance guys to show up. Um, so the, the idea for this apartment, I guess, was to do um, a theme uh, and tell a story, if that makes sense. Uh, you know, us being writers and things like that, you know, we like having an element of storytelling. Um, it's not as obvious, but like we wanted the living room to be Tokyo or, or city life. So it's very busy. So, and there's a lot of lights everywhere. So it's like, you know, this area where, you know, you, we create art and stuff like that, the art district or whatever. There's the video game area, like the arcade stuff. We got an arcade machine right there, which you're gonna see some unboxing videos and stuff of posting up this weekend on the Venom vlog. Uh, we got all of our Spider-Man statues. We got our uh, tribute to Echo right there, um, his ashes and everything uh, in that case. Um, so this is very busy, this whole area. And we have pictures of Tokyo all around, including, um, hold on, let me turn this light off. Uh, there we go. Um, including this artwork up here. So this is from a comic book I did called Soul Star, uh, where it's about a Japanese superhero. And these two pieces down here with the girl on them, um, I drew the pencils on and Kevin Eastman, who was the creator of the Ninja Turtles, did the inks and stuff. And uh, and I think he, I think uh, PJ who colored this, this was drawn by Kevin Eastman. And that's one of the other covers we did um pj colored it and then colored this version as well which is right there um <laughs> right there uh and those uh, and now pj works for idw he does ninja turtle covers and stuff uh, he did covers for the last ronin so um so yeah really awesome you know to see people grow in the industry and, and especially someone like pj who has an amazing talent and so it was really it's always been an honor to work with him in comics and I'm so glad, you know, Omar introduced us and, and we got to work together on some books, one of which never got to release, unfortunately. And I feel bad for PJ because I think it's some of the best work he's ever drawn. Um, but uh, but I hopefully that book comes out one day. But if not, PJ, he's doing killer stuff for IDW and for Heavy Metal Magazine. So if you read any of that stuff, you're going to see PJ's work a lot. Uh, let me catch up on the chat here real quick. I appreciate that, man. No rush. Hope all is well in the new place. Yeah, everything's going well so far. Hey, EV. Hey, man. Hey, folks. How's everyone? Nice studio. Now I know whose house I'm going to invade next. Yeah, Dick, come on over. Come on over, man. I haven't really had a lot of company so far, so uh, absolutely. Um, as you can see, my kitchen's behind me. Um, just a standard kitchen, but I bought this little coffee table area so I can sit and eat. And there's my Moon Knight section with all of my Moon Knight stuff. Um, so, yeah. And, oh, yeah, if you can see on the counter there... Um, our, our alarm, the battery died in the alarm uh, early today. It woke us up at like 5 in the morning. So we unplugged it. So we're going to put a new battery in. We're just waiting to get through the day, filming a bunch of stuff. 
and then we'll put a new battery in and put it back on the wall. So yeah, if anyone sees my smoke detector missing, it's it's I'm putting it back. Don't worry, I'm not violating anything. Uh, it's just but it was loud as hell. Um, so yeah, so this all, whole area is just Tokyo. It's just all busy, you know, lights uh, at nighttime when everything's plugged in. There's like purple and green and blue lights just kind of moving around. Real soft lights though. Not too much for, you know, my head and everything. So, uh, and then I can control every element of it. So I can turn the keyboard off. I can turn the, the lights behind the TV off. I can turn, there's a uh, lights, LED lights going all along the base. Oh my God, how, I can't do this. Yeah, right there. All along the base in the back behind all those shelves, there's a, a purple light that goes through all that. So, um, so yeah, so that's, this is Tokyo, if you want to call it that. And uh, I haven't really given anything to the kitchen i just figured it's like an extension of tokyo it's just okay or the city life it's just um because i have more pictures of tokyo up you'll see like this one here and these ones here um and this closet i'm not gonna open up it's it's still a little messy but it's uh, i threw my comic book boxes in there i just gotta organize them um and then i threw some shirts in there it's just last minute shirts right by the front door in case i need an extra shirt on my way to work uh this area is probably of interest to some people this is how um, me and my um, others, other personalities, if you want to call it that, um, my other parts is what we call it, uh, how we communicate. We all have a board and then we have a standard work board that lists our schedules, you know, like what we got to do for work, um, what days we work, what days we typically have off. We have stuff on our phone that, you know, that tells us our schedule for work. Um, so this is just kind of our area where we can all make notes on things we got to do or that we're working on or that we like engagements we have coming up because one thing that kind of shocked me when I started learning about this stuff is that um, all of us have made our own friends. Uh, so like, so like me and blue, we share Instagram. I pretty much post on Instagram. Um, and then blue kind of does the stories most of the time. Although every once in a while I might post a story, but blue likes to, <laughs> shit talk uh how well he does at work so anyway yeah um so this is kind of how we communicate in a way um and and try to keep each other up to these used to be memory boards back when we thought i had a different diagnosis um this is what i used to try to keep track of things and then i'd, I'd be missing like entire days and i'm like well what did i do on these days and you know did anyone write did i write anything down and turns out this this is the condition i had it was just it wasn't me on those days so it's it's a lot um we all eat a little differently so like my fridge i'm not gonna show everything well i guess i'll just flash it real quick it's just uh there's like chips in there but there's like a lot of like lettuce tomatoes uh you know stuff like that so we have like a mixture we got juice water in there and soda it's like it's a lot um actually over here you'll see we all have our own shoes um again not even something i was realizing we were doing but uh one day I looked over, I was like, why do I have nine pairs of shoes? And I'm like, holy cow. I'm like, all of us have our own pair of tennis shoes and some of us have backup shoes and some of us have flip flops. Um, so it's, yeah, so it's a lot to go through. Um, food for Ace, you know, Moon Knight wall. Now you can see why I'm so obsessed with Moon Knight. It's kind of been helping me process a lot of this stuff that I'm going through. Um, hello, Florent. How's it going? Just check to make sure, but yes, we can still get Soulstar on Amazon. Yes, you can. Yeah, Soulstar will forever be available on Amazon. I just, so I haven't been getting, so when people buy copies, I usually sell like a, maybe one or two a month. And usually that money comes to me and I let it save up and then I'll try to donate to the aneurysm foundation. But I haven't been getting money for a while and I found out why. They screwed up something or my bank account changed or something. So they made me change all my information. So now I should be getting the money they owe me in soon. And then once I get it, I'll probably just make a donation. So Hopefully they fix that. I mean, this is like the third time I've had to go through this with KDP, which is the Kindle uh, digital publishing, whatever. Um, so hopefully this, you know, works out. Um, all right. So now, now that we've done city life, right, that's one part. Now we go into the, the woods, the gr green. Uh, so, and this was actually done by green, uh, one of our parts. Um, and he didn't make it green because his name is green. Uh, some people ask me that uh, at work and stuff. Um, he made this because uh, I'm a big Green Lantern fan and I'm a big DC fan. And they wanted to make something for me that, you know, was DC centric. So there's a lot of stuff over here. Um, we'll get into some of the details. Uh, the shelves, they're, they're all wooden shelves, pine wood, but they're covered with contact paper. And he actually did 
different shades of green. So the top one is like a, I don't know what, it's like a soft military green. The middle one is like a sand green. The, the bottom one is a, like a, a bright green. Um, yeah, just did different, different greens on all this and put all of our DC McFarlane figures all around. I thought this came out really well. Um, used the pipes and everything and bought more pipes to hold all the wood up. Um, there's some figures up there that are still in the box, but we're going to keep in the box. Uh, it's all the Gotham Knights figures and from the upcoming video game. Um, then there's Jim Lee artwork all along the wall. Original comic book pages from Smallville, season 11. The, that Superman drawing there. Uh, there's Dean Kane, autographed by Dean Kane. Um, I got my graded comic signed by Jeff Johns um, and different covers all along the way, all by Jeff Johns, most of them. Um, except that Grant, I think Grant Morrison signed that Action Comics one. Um, we got George Perez artwork back there, Superman and Metron, R.I.P. George Perez. Um, you know, a, a, pay, a po, uh, I'm sorry, a, a newspaper uh, from the new Superman and Lois show, which I'm a big fan of. More figures that I just felt made sense to keep in the the box. Um, Livio Ramondelli, I'm a big fan of. He's a friend of mine. Amazing Mr. Freeze piece. And a Green Lantern animated poster signed by Bruce Tim and Jim Krieg. Um, so, yeah, it's like got a lot of cool stuff. This is something my friend Omar got me. It's a, an original Aqualad uh, concept art by Joe Prado. Um, this is from Brightest Day, which is the book that I was reading when I recovered from my aneurysm. So that was really cool that Omar got me that. And it's, a, it's an original piece. Um, so that's not even like comic book art. It's just concept art that uh that's made before the book even came out and stuff so when they were designing aqualad who i'm a huge fan of um obviously i got my green lantern poster can't go anywhere without it um and then i have my tim sale painting from heroes that was actually used on the set of the show and then we got the bat cave down here i found this bat cave this is the adam west bat cave made by mcfarlane i found it for eight dollars at target so i, I had to buy it <laughs> and my plan is eventually to put this thing which i use as a drawer I'm going to put it in that closet in the hallway and uh, and then I'm going to put another bookshelf like that here so I can start collecting more McFarlane figures because as of right now I have no more room so I can't buy any more figures uh, unless I find parallax then obviously I'm going to buy parallax um, but this hallway is pretty cool um, it it's uh it wasn't in the original design so when I came here this place looked a lot different uh, than than it what was originally shown to me um, so this hallway was shorter, a little shorter, and there was a, a hole in this wall that led you into the kitchen. But they instead made the kitchen bigger and added more counter space, which I appreciate because there was none in the original design that I saw. Um, and then they closed this off. So this is Green's tool set. So this is, this is Green's corner. He didn't want much. He just wanted a, a board and he wanted the pegboards here to, um, to hang all of his stuff so he could fix things as you know, things popped up like this door, which behind is the AC unit came off the hinge, as you can see, and hit me right in the head. Not hard because it's not a hard door, but I went to open it when I moved in and it came right off and hit me in the face and pushed me against the wall. Uh, so, yeah, kind of a, a blooper reel there that unfortunately wasn't caught on camera. Um, and then this bathroom door doesn't shut all the way. So that's what I'm waiting for them to come fix today. There's also a piece of wood missing in the bathroom here and uh and i need that fixed too so uh the bathroom is uh ocean themed or you know so i have the city life i have the woods and this is water um so kind of going through some of the elements in a way but uh, yeah i'm still working on this adding some stuff but you know i got a mcfarland assassin's creed poster steve zisu who i'm a big fan of this cool piece of art that i've seen a lot it's from an artist here in florida i think but it looks like Bioshock, so I just liked it for that reason. And then a painting that someone at work gave me that reminded me of the beach. Uh, and then there's a lot of beach-themed, you know, stuff. And uh, including three seashells, which if you if you wipe your ass in the future, you're going to need three seashells to do it with. Uh, toilet paper won't cut it. So I figured I'd keep three seashells in the bathroom for anyone from the future that comes to visit me. They'll have a way to wipe their ass uh, properly. Um, so, yeah, that's it. I mean, this is literally it. It's just one big room. And, uh, and, um, I don't know, I, I dig it. I dig the space a lot. Um, I'm able to do a lot with it. And as you can see, we've all added something to this place. Um, blue did the moon Knight wall. Blue was the one who first watched moon Knight and then left notes all over our boards telling all of us to watch moon Knight, um, saying that it'll help with the process. It'll help, 
um, understand. Uh, blue is blue is who goes to work for me, um, and blue is uh, blue understands better what's going on because I think blue is the newest or one of the newest parts of us, and through therapy sessions has learned a lot about what we all are. So blue's different in the way that they don't think of themselves as, as a person. They think of themselves as a way to help me bounce back um, from all the stuff we've been through lately. So, um, so yeah, I don't know. The way my um, boss describes blue, I mean, not really my boss anymore. It's more blue's boss. But, um, yeah, it's just, it's, it's, yeah, it's a lot of this is still new to me. And I'm still processing um, and still trying to understand um, so well, let me catch up on chat here, whether it was yourself or one of your personalities, congratulations on the promotion at work. You've been absolutely killing it. Proud of you, dude. Thank you so much. I, I mean, I, I, I will say that that's blue. Um, and I don't feel bad about, you know, that at all because, um, blue has been working hard. Uh, blue is kind of competitive, but also like, um, you know, wants the best, I guess for, for us blue. And it's weird too, because like, none of them really have an interest in being on camera, although I feel like blue might at some point, but, um, around people like my boss can tell us all apart. My friend, Nathan can tell us all apart. My friend, John, even, um, who's had the least interaction with us already was like, Oh wait. So that day I knew something was different about you. He's like the way you walked, the way you were talking. It's like, it's yeah. Um, it, and, and since we're all the same shade of me, we all have like similar interests, but yet not at the same time. And then there are some things that I feel like I used to love a lot that I don't feel as connected to anymore. But then I hear that blue is very connected to those things. And I'm like, so it's like we've compartmentalized things to get us through this. Uh, my friend Nate says it best, and as does my you know therapist when we talk, uh, which is this is a this is an attempt to survive something that our brain is having trouble comprehending. Um, and it's also because some of our childhood stuff has been popping up in a roundabout way lately. And that wasn't, those aren't the best of memories either. And that's been causing a lot of issues. And then we see Moon Knight and we see that Mark and Steven are going through the exact same thing. And it just, it made us, it helped us ease into this because before all this, my my thought on like having a, a fractured mind is horror movies, you know, or fight club or something to where one of us must be doing something wrong and hurting somebody. And it turns out that's not the case at all. Although we do have one side that um, does cause self harm. Um, but that's been, we're working on, I mean, that's been under control for the most part uh, for the past few months. So you know what but for the most but other than that i mean it's like not like there's no external i you know i message people like hey have i sent anything to you have i been you know have i acted strange no no not at all and i'm like okay so it, it seems pretty contained and it seems for the most part contained in the past maybe year and a half uh but mostly the last six or seven months so let's see uh i'm good what about you hey i'm good florin thank you hey el nova what's up if you can't respond to this oh sorry hang on if you can't respond to this question, just go ahead, bro. When you discover about your system and now safe question, how you read the latest issue of Moon Knight. Um, so we, we, I guess the system part is like, um, we discovered something was something like that must've been happening about February, end of February, early March. Um, I, I don't know how much I shared of this on, on, um, YouTube here, but I, I attempted suicide and, um, and that was the trigger for something that happened where one of me stopped the act and the other one tried to go through with the act. And, um, that was kind of like the, the main thing because I had to go to the hospital obviously, um, for the wound, which I've been covering, you know, if you see in my videos, I have, I usually wear a sleeve. Um, and also the sleeves tell you which one of us is us. I wear orange and blue wears a blue sleeve and green wears a green sleeve. Um, so we mostly cover up our arm as it's been healing. 
uh, so for the past, you know, uh, six months or so. So then I went to the therapist and as, cause you know, it was recommended that I should after an incident like that. And then as we were talking, they started to piece something together, um, based on my medical records, which we were talking about, which is, I don't have a visual memory. So I was saying things like, like I had seen something happen and they're like, well, well, your brain can't store the visual memory. So how do you know you were there watching something? And I go, I don't know. I guess I just felt like I was. And that's when we started piecing stuff together. And then we started looking back at my previous diagnosis of me having these memory lapses and these moments of amnesia. And that led us down over the course of like two or three sessions of pinpointing it. And, and then we found out that I have had this condition before my aneurysm. Um, so apparently I was diagnosed with something like this in my late teens, early twenties. And, and that is once those that popped up, once that information came up, um, then it changed everything. And we were like, oh, you know, and even me, um, because what they have discovered, I guess, is that, um, I th always thought I was the original me with no memories from the aneurysm, but it seems like. I'm a new me that that came from after the aneurysm um, and that possibly that version of me is the one affected was affected by the aneurysm and is gone that alter or original or whatever it's been a lot uh, nothing was scarier than having someone tell me that I could possibly not be me because I just always thought oh I'm me just with no memories but it seems like it was it's different than that. Hold on, I'm getting like washed out by the light again from behind me. It's so bright outside. Um, so that's kind of how they started piecing it together. And then when we found out I had something like this that was being withheld from me, um, that also connected the dots further. Because normally they say this takes a long time to, to really diagnose. Um, but because I've already had a diagnosis of memory loss and stuff like that, they were able to piece things together. And then, like I said, then we found out the truth that there was something like this happened to me in my late teens, uh, early twenties. And, uh, and there was, um, two of me back then. And so that's what led to all this. So it, it, it's been, it's been a lot of revelations and a lot of things, you know, over and over, uh, talking it out, um, you know, trying to get answers, me not having most of them, but green having some, and blue being the new kind of kid on the block, uh, you know, and then there's fade, um, who, um, I guess came about at our suicide attempt. So, um, so yeah, uh, that's, that's, I guess that's the best way I can explain it now. And we're still mapping our system. Uh, we're still in that phase. We haven't got to the trauma stuff yet or anything like that. We're kind of easing into stuff. Uh, I still have, I'm, I'm, I think I've accepted things a little bit more. I think it's because of growing up with, you know, writing and coming up with characters and, you know, and stuff like that. I think I'm, I'm adjusting a little better than maybe I, I would definitely better than I was at first. Um, but you know, we're, it's still a process, right? So, so our system is still being kind of mapped in a way. We just want to make sure it's still just the four of us and that, um, before we start proceeding forward. Um, and then, uh, I have read the, I have the latest issue of Moonet. I have not read it yet. Um, I don't, I don't think I've, I think it's issue 14. I haven't read 13 or 14, I don't think. And then I also have uh, Moon Knight, Black Blood, Black, White and Blood or whatever. Uh, number three, I have not read that either. Um, also talking about this kind of mental situation, I'm pretty sure you'll find Immortal Hulk intriguing. I don't know if you already read that comic run. I actually have read that run, which is funny because I didn't even think about that while I've been going through this. And a friend of mine brought that up. He was like, man, this, some of this reminds me of a mortal Hulk. And I go a little bit like it's like, I was like, Oh, I, I guess there is a slight parallel there. I mean, I, they're dealing with other things, obviously very fictionalized, but same, but also Moon Knight. I think Moon Knight was like, for me, the, the fictional thing that really helped me kind of zero in on, on wrapping my head around this and realizing that, you know, it's not I against I, you know, that, that there's the other parts have a purpose and, and most of them are, or at least one of them in particular, blue is, is working really hard to trying to get us to be, um, I don't know, I guess we, we were really falling off the edge there for a minute. Um, and, and I think blues 
purpose was to to show like hey okay well we may lose our mind but we're still going to kick ass at our job and we're still going to you know get this new apartment and we're still going to function and i think that having that helped big time uh definitely helped big time I don't know about that. I'm so sorry, bro. I hope that now you feel better. I mean, I feel fine. I mean, I just, uh, it's just a lot to, to go through. Um, but I mean, I'm not, I don't want to sit here and whine about it. And my channel's never been about just about my health. I know we bring it up sometimes, but you know, I feel like we're doing a room tour. This felt like a good place to kind of just dump all this. So that way we can get back to the, the fun stuff of my channel. Cause some people did ask, like maybe talking about it more will help. Maybe, um, you know, making your channel, you know, talk, you know, doing a show because we that's why I created Seek as a Construct. I thought it would be a way for me to kind of deal with it, talking about Moon Knight. But then Seek as a Construct kind of became something else. And it's just like a random review show, like all my other stuff. And I think I feel like in the end, that's what I feel most comfortable doing. And the conversations I have about this, I may share from time to time on here. But I think between me and my therapist and family and stuff and friends, that's that is much better for me and and kind of keeping this show and this channel about the stuff we love because i know we all have stuff that we go through and this need i i kind of want this place to be a place where i don't exclude someone by talking about something so personal that we just talk about the things that unite us you know um but i appreciate those of you who ask and ill uh, nova appreciate that and everything so this is something i've been wondering about in a while actually for example like you like venom but what's blue and green's feeling about the character you know what? That's funny too. So, um, blue, blue likes, um, moon Knight, <laughs> um, and transformers. And like, I l love transformers, but like, I also like, don't feel that. So like when I was getting ready to sell a bunch of stuff, I was like, Oh, let's sell all these transformers. And blue was actually the one who left notes on the board saying, don't sell the transformers or at least keep these ones for me. So these ones are those these are Blue's collection here of Transformers. These are the ones Blue wanted to keep from the Bumblebee movie. So uh, and then a couple other ones like uh, classic uh, Soundwave and stuff with all the tapes and everything. Um, so yeah, so uh, I don't know. I Green, I'll be honest. Green is not like a well the way Nate and everyone and my therapist and my boss and everyone who's met Green the way they describe Green is. Uh, that he's kind of no nonsense. He he doesn't speak a lot. Um, he he just kind of, you know, you tell him something, he's kind of like, hmm, hmm, you know, just like doesn't say much. When he does talk, though, I guess he he speaks more from our our chest. So he's, his voice is projects like really intensely, um, not like jarring, but just like with authority. Um, we we since we have back pain and other things like we kind of hunch when we walk and things like that. Um, blue doesn't hunch as much green doesn't hunch at all so we we almost look like two inches taller by the way uh green posture is um so green just seems to just work like just um work with his hands he's got a lot of tools um he made a lot of stuff in this apartment um nothing too fancy obviously but just like little things patched up stuff uh just little things that i probably could do I just don't actively do, and um, and so he seems to do that. So I, I don't know if he even has an opinion on superheroes at all. I don't think he thinks about that stuff. He doesn't watch TV. He doesn't really do any of that stuff, as far as I know. So um, so I don't know what Green thinks about Venom. Blue, I, I'll leave a note and ask. I, I think Blue likes Moon Knight because of the connection we all have. But past that, I think Moon, uh, Blue just likes Transformers. Um, so I don't know. I don't know if they have an opinion about Venom, but uh, that's a good question. I actually, someone else asked me that in real life, and I, I was like, I wonder. I wonder if one of them tells me that Donny Cage run was the best Venom run. We have nothing to talk about. <laughs> uh, yeah, you know, I have a little bit of a sense of humor about that kind of stuff where, because uh, I noticed like um, Green. So we had it when we did a, a doctor check. We had to do like a, a physical, right? And they did. Um, they checked our weight, and they're like, Yeah, you're about like 25 pow pounds overweight. And so I'm like, okay, we're, you know, depression, you know, everything like we, we eat, you know, our habits are bad sometimes, especially during the last six or seven months. Um, but we're always kind of been around this weight, you know, like around 210 to 220. Um, we tried it. We, we tried when we first started the Venom vlog, we got under 200, uh, which was awesome. We were like 197. Uh, but since then we have, we've been around 210 uh, to 220 roughly. Um, and most of it's like right here <laughs> in our face. It's like uh, in, in some of our, like our love handles and stuff, but yeah, it's just uh, anyway. So 
Green left notes, like, eat a salad. And then one day, Green took it upon himself to go um, buy groceries and bought, like, bought lettuce and tomatoes and things like that. And, uh, you know, like, deli slices of meat and, um, uh, you know, uh, bags of lettuce or, you know, to make salads or whatever. So, um, yeah, Green, I think, is is a balance in that regard like i think green will eat a burger or you know whatever but it seems like because we eat burgers green's like okay well i'm gonna eat green you know healthier stuff and i blues a little bit like that also um but but blue is like me in the sense that we also both like trash food sometimes (laughs) so uh but blue doesn't eat it to um because they're sad about anything i feel like sometimes i eat bad food because it's more convenient um and because I'm maybe part of me is still sad on some level, blue I think eats it because uh, maybe they just have the taste. Like because blue, it's mainly me and blue. It's mainly the two of us. Uh, blue goes to work, and I'm here at home uh, working on Neverland or working on videos when I can. And as you've seen last weekend, I finally am back in the groove of videos. And now today, we're finally putting videos out again, and it, it feels good. We're, we've also been working on Neverland. Um, so we're compartmentalizing and we're separating things. And that's Blue's thing is Blue is like, dude, you, sh- you should be writing. Like you have a great talent for it and, you know, you need to be doing that. Let me go work our day job to pay our bills uh, because I like selling and I like tr- talking shit <laughs> to to the other salespeople. Uh, friendly, in a friendly way. I, you know, I think sometimes it gets a little too competitive, but in a friendly way. And then uh, Green is like, is like, uh, you know, I, I guess just, comes out from time to time uh all of us can drive um but uh fade does not drive so uh, and fade is some someone that green keeps an eye on so that's why green isn't around a lot um mostly because he i guess he's keeping an eye on fade who is kind of a destructive part of us uh not like in a hurt other people kind of way but in a hurting ourselves kind of way um which is what we're trying to That's what we're going through in therapy a lot, is that stuff. Um, So that's funny, though, Evie. You know, some years ago, I really wanted to do the Italian bootleg Moon Knight version of Venom vlog. Kind of weird how stuff comes out. Oh, that's weird. Holy cow. Italian bootleg Moon Knight version of Venom vlog? Well, she'd still do it. I'll watch the living hell out of it. Thank you all for the thumbs up, by the way. I appreciate that. And thanks for letting me talk about this stuff. Like I said, in most cases, I won't bring it to the channel um, because I'm still processing and going through a lot of it. But it is it is nice that you guys um my the first person i told reacted really badly and it made me not want to say i didn't say shit about it for i think like two whole months and it wasn't until like may or something when i finally started opening up about it again um and tried to tell somebody else and so i was i really got shell-shocked by that first person's response um and it hurt the 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 uh, reaction they had towards me hurt a lot um so uh so yeah uh, yeah some people i get it i mean even for me it's it's a weird thing at times but now it's it's been five months or so it's up or six months it's like a part of my life so I, I have to adjust to it and so i think uh i've always had that mindset of when obstacles come i just adjust always with my health i, I adjust i do what i can and uh and try to bring the best version of me to you know to to these episodes and use this as my outlet um, but for a while there, it just got, it got really bad. And I think some of that was because I let it get worse due to that person's response. So thank you all for, you know, not like branding me in a, in a way, um, you know, I appreciate it very much. Um, off topic with the immortal seek sounds really cool. <laughs> no, no, I've always, someone always said, they're like, what power would you rather have? Like immortality or something else? I'm like, dude, I do not want to live forever. Uh, I do not want to live forever at all. But, uh, <laughs> but like the Hulk does, I guess. Um, but that, that's funny, though, Immortal Seek. I never stopped to say this, but I really like your videos uh, ever since. Your Venom comic videos are the best. Sorry. Um, my elbow just, like, almost knocked over my whole desk. All right, everybody, calm down. Uh, your your videos, I'm trying to get complimented here. This is just unbelievable. I never stopped uh, to say that, but I really like your videos uh, since ever. Your Venom comics videos are the best, and I follow you since first news of the movie. Keep fighting, man. I appreciate it. This is not like my other stuff that I've had to deal with. Like health stuff is for the last, you know, 11, 12 years now has always been a part of my life and obstacles have always been a part. This is a very different obstacle. I mean, very different uh, than anything I've ever dealt with before. Cause pain is one thing. 
you can sometimes take things for pain or deal with pain or process pain a certain way. This is this is something my my brain decided to do because I wasn't doing it, I guess. Um, but as my therapist says and as my friend Nate says, like this is not a weakness. This shows how strong my brain is that it would literally fracture in this way and create strong versions of me from the strength I have to help me move forward. Um, when it was explained to me like that, it, I don't know, and on some level it made me feel like, I was like, it made me feel better. It made me feel like I am strong. Um, but uh, but yeah, you know, some days you have those moments where you, you're not sure and you do your best. And I've had people write me recently on Instagram, like Dan and stuff and a couple other people. And they were like, not Dan um, Harmon, uh, Dan Hurd and a couple other people. And they were like, hey, keep going, keep fighting and tell me stuff like that. And I appreciate it. I will say this, this is not, now that we know what this is, I'm not struggling through it. Before when I was just like, what day is it? And I, I remember Monday, but it's Friday now. How the hell did I get to Friday? And I don't remember Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday. Those were the struggle days. Now I understand what's probably happening. And now I don't go that long, typically, um, without being me. Uh, I'm usually around at least once a day, um, most of the time. So, um, so yeah, I'm not, like, especially on my days off. So that's why we have all that board stuff and try to schedule. My life has always been about routine. That's how I got through pain. That's how I got through health things is I just make a routine and follow it. So we're kind of doing that with this on a slightly different level, but yeah, we're, we're doing it. Um, but thank you. And I'm, I appreciate you watching. I honestly, I appreciate anyone who watches my show. I mean, we've done what, 720 Venom blog episodes. We're like 30 something Venom blog live episodes. Uh, we've done, you know, uh, a Joker show that went away and then we folded it into Seek and Destroy. So that put us over like 250 Seek and Destroy episodes. We folded the Ghost Rider show into Seek and Destroy. We, you know, uh, cleaned up the channel because of Kappa. Like we've been through a lot together. Actually, since making Venom Vlog, I moved from my original apartment in L.A. to um, which was uh, I lived in for seven years uh, when I worked through comics and all that stuff. And then when I quit comics, because uh, during those last year of me working in comics, I was doing Twitch streaming and stuff. Um, but then I quit comics and I went to work at Lego and I started the Venom vlog right after. And I moved in with Kevin, uh, who is uh, my friend in California who works on the Jason Ellis show. Amazing dude. Super awesome. You know, uh, check out his podcast too. Uh, Kevin Kraft. Um, he does Jason Ellis show and he does Mad Scientist Party Hour. So check those shows out. Um, amazing dude. And he let me move in with him at a discounted rate and stay in one of the spare rooms. Um, and we lived in a really nice place uh, over by Warner Brothers and stuff. And it was it was a dream come true. I always wanted to be that close to Warner Brothers. Um, so uh, even though they're a, a toxic mess lately, and I'll make some more videos on that coming up because some of you guys like my Batgirl video. So I'll have some more Warner Brothers stuff coming up soon too. Um, but, you know, from Kevin to then living with Vic and then moving across country to living in that last apartment, then Echo passing away, uh, rescuing Ace, and moving to this place. I mean, like, massive life-changing events, uh, some of them. Uh, moves are moves, you know, like, you know, I mean, change comes with move, but some of those were, I moved to the same city, so it's not that big of a deal, but there's at least, like, three major, four major events in that span of time since we've done this show, and I feel like I've changed a lot and grown a lot in some ways, but I also feel like, you know, there's still shitty things I do and things I need to work on, and, and, uh, but, and also opinions I have that some people don't like, and that's always going to be the case. So I appreciate if I ever do say something you don't agree with that you still stick it out with me and, and we, and we um, have this dialogue and go back and forth. Um, it means a lot. Like swordsman is, is a great example. I feel like I don't know swordsman personally, but uh, based on some of his comments and stuff, I'm going to say that we're probably on different sides of the fence when it comes to a lot of life things, but it doesn't prevent us from being friends on here and talking to each other. And that's what I wanted for this show. That's what I wanted for Venom Vlog is I wanted it to connect us like a symbiote, you know, in a way. I wanted, I didn't want to, I didn't want to, if someone came in with a hot take on something and a, a personal opinion that really pushed my buttons, I wanted to learn patience and, and, and be able to talk it out with that person. And in some instances, we haven't been able to, you get trolls from time to time. But, uh, but for the most part, I think people come here and just kind of have fun. And we have such a, we talk about such niche things that, you know, um, but to talk about niche things and grow to nearly 3,000 subscribers is more than I, I ever thought. And so for that, I thank you all very, very much. Um, hold on, let's see here. Uh, there's some more comments. Blue is a personality of culture. Interesting. 
Um, it sounds like Green could give me some advice as I'm fat as fuck. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I mean, I mean, we're still this, so like Green must not be doing that good of a job. <laughs> but I, I think um, so. Green's pain threshold. So this is also interesting. We found out because um, we have shoulder pain. Um, we had surgery recently, and then again, then we have our back pain, and then we have headaches. Well, the headaches mostly have gone away since our last surgery earlier this year. So we have all these things. Green doesn't seem to experience any of that. Green was at Wonder uh, Megacon for a day, and Nate was with him. And Nate was like, he could tell the way he was sitting, the way he was talking. He was like, you're not Sikh, are you? And he's like, no, I'm green. And he like, you know, explained a little bit, but he explains things in a small burst. He's very, very impeccable with his words, which is funny because that's something Dan Harmon brought to my attention once about um, the four life goals, one being impeccable with your words. Apparently green only says the minimum, but it's it's the exact information you need. My brain does not work that way. I have verbal diarrhea. I just go and go and go and go. I have to cut things out of my videos sometimes because I just verbal diarrhea. Green is not like that. Green says exactly what needs to be said and then moves on. Um, and he says it in like four words or less. Like he's just very punctual. Um, and Nate said, Nate said that he's like, dude, he, he's like you with your vocabulary times 10 and 40 times as punctual as you are. And I'm like, that's, it's just, a, that's like crazy to hear. I mean, well, I don't, we're not supposed to use the word crazy, but um, yeah, but green, uh, but green still has limitations in somewhat. Um, green did a lot of our moving stuff, moving from place to place and hurt our shoulder really bad. Green may not have felt it, but at our therapy session, both me and Blue complained about the pain in our shoulders and needed to get a prescription for, for, for something for our shoulder because Green overused it. Um, and he may not have felt the amount of pain that was there. And it turns out he has a, a higher threshold for pain or processes pain differently than the rest of us do. That really was like mind blowing to me. That just that concept of there's a version of me that feels pain, but it like it like on a like very like this shoulder was killing me. I mean, it hurt so bad that I was like putting a mouth guard in to grit my teeth sometimes. But to green, nada. Kept using the arm. So. Um, yeah, that's just a, a lot uh, to process that. So so the colors, um, Ilnova asked right here, why colors? Green Lantern related? Yes. Um, yes, it is. We So as we were talking with our therapist, she was also wondering why the colors, what's going on with the colors. Our, so our brains, when it goes through traumatic things and it creates a situation like this, I guess, it processes it in a way that makes sense to the brain. And since my brain is filled with goofy comic book shit, it, my brain compartmentalized us in a way that, um, that had that effect. Also, me, like I have for years, have had this thing where I can kind of sense an energy from people when I meet them. So people kind of look like colors to me. So that's also where their names come from. I didn't name them or anything. Um, I think green has a name, actually, to be honest with you. Blue does not, and Fade does not. But I think green actually does have a name. Um, and so the, the colors come from Green Lantern. Uh, I don't know about orange. I'm, I'm branded with orange, but that's how I always kind of saw myself. But I, that could just be because my car's orange. I have, I don't know. Um, but at least in this case, like, I mean, I don't feel like I'm a greedy person <laughs> or an avarice person, but uh, maybe I don't see myself positively in some regard on, for some reason. Um, Blue is very much someone who is hoping that things will get back to the way they were. Um, so they work on putting us towards that goal. And, uh, and, and because it's mainly Blue and me that, you know, work together, blue the ring a lot of times enhances a, a green lantern's ability but that's where green comes in green seems to be just will he just does things and he doesn't talk much and he just gets things done so oh there's a hole in the wall in the kitchen so he moves the stove despite our arm hurting and fixes like patches up the hole in the wall and the hole was like like this big i mean it was like a foot and a half uh tall 
and uh, about a foot wide uh, and it was behind our stove and bugs when we moved in this place there were so many bugs it was so gross and we honestly thought we were just going to move right back out because of how many bugs were here we thought we were just like you know what just live here for a month break your lease move to another place but green went around sealed he found three holes in his apartment sealed them up uh uh one had was full of like cobwebs went in there killed a spider um, and all of its baby spiders took out the web um sprayed in there put traps in there sealed the hole up uh then went to another hole and no spiders in that one but roaches did the same thing exterminated them sealed the hole up now I've, i think i've gone like three days without seeing a single bug but when i moved in here it was like bugs all the time and then over the course of like um the first week less and less and then by the end of the second week you know one a day and then now it's like maybe i'll see one or two every three days and that's just because we're we live in a very um there's a lot of water around us uh we actually live right next to the pool also and there's big trees around this whole building that we live in so um a lot of those will will naturally bring bugs but i just think the person who lived here before never once sprayed for bugs <coughs> excuse me so yeah so green just does things when there's an obstacle he just does things so yeah i guess he's will willpower in a way um so that's at least how we've been compartmentalizing or talking about it with our our therapist and that's how we've been compartmentalized and our therapist was wondering if there was any other colors because she, i guess she looked up green lantern stuff and on her own and was like oh there's other colors but it seems like anything that's kind of harmful or negative you know might just be what fate is you know fear or you know anger towards himself whatever seems to all be in one so so it's not a true representation of green lantern but it, it does mirror it on some level yeah yo brother i gotta bounce and get back to work be cool stay positive stay hydrated yeah i know i you're probably realizing i need a drink um thank you eric i appreciate that um i'm probably gonna wrap this up soon but uh eric you have a good day thanks for popping in man i appreciate it all of you i appreciate you all being here i'm gonna have to leave as well i need to go to therapy bye folks hey good luck everything at therapy today and uh, keep us posted as well. Evie, thank you so much. I appreciate it very much. I appreciate you being here. You stay positive too. We are better when we're not alone and you're not alone because we are Venom, right? That's right. That's right. Um, so thank you, Evie. Yeah, you go have a good day too. I appreciate it. And thank you all for the seven thumbs up. And thanks for hanging out with me doing this tour. Um, I have uh, a Venom vlog that's I'm going to try to get up later today with no dialogue. It's just me unboxing the Arcade 1-Up countertop Marvel vs. Capcom machine. So you'll see that just that video um post up hopefully tonight and then tomorrow i'll have a video of me talking about playing it you know because i played it for like a, almost a whole afternoon um the other day and so you'll see video on that too actually i think i was wearing the same shirt <laughs> i just did laundry and then i i it was the first shirt i pulled out like oh didn't i wear this a few days ago anyway yeah it's my it's my oscar isaac apocalypse shirt uh yeah so um so yeah, you'll see two videos on the arcade machine, one without me talking and the other one just unboxing and the other one with me talking. Um, then you'll also get my review of Venom, uh, Venom Lethal Protector number five this weekend as well. Um, and then I might try to get a, Ven a Spider-Man 2099 video up for Monday. So that's what I'm gonna try to do is Tuesday record like a video or two and so that I can have something to post on Friday. And then on Friday um, record another video or two and maybe do a live stream and then have stuff go up all weekend. And that way I can start making a schedule again where it's like, all right, everyone, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, four days, that's when I post videos. Monday, to Tuesday, Wednesday, no videos. That's I think that's the route I'm gonna go, but we'll, you know, let me get there first before I commit to it. Um, and Il Nova says, I remember some months ago your post on Instagram about old motorcyclist days or something like that. Was that green or someone else or you don't remember? I, I don't remember that at all. Um, uh, yeah, I don't know. I, it's, it wasn't me. I don't think I've ever ridden a motorcycle. Um, or at least, at least me of the last 12 years hasn't ridden a motorcycle, but, um, could be green. I don't think, I don't know what blues knowledge of motorcycles are, although blue now works at Harley Davidson. So um, maybe there is some knowledge there. Um, but possibly green, uh, possibly green. Uh, so uh, there was a time where because we all had access to the the Instagram and it's the only social media we have, I think there was a an urge to get things out there for all of them. Um, plus it was a way, that's how we used to keep track of our health stuff. We'd post on Instagram and then bring our Instagram to our doctor and go, oh, on this day we ate this or, and we got a headache later that night. So that's how we could find out things about us that like trigger headaches or anything like that. 
Um, so I think there was a time where we were all using Instagram like that, but now there's a new rule where it's it's pretty much I just use Instagram and Blue uses our Instagram stories a lot. Um, but typically I try to be the only one who posts on Instagram. That's why sometimes I'll go back and delete things because I'm like, I didn't post this and I kind of don't want, I want to set a, an ex- I want to set a rule about posting on here. Um, you know, so, so typically now you'll just get me on the, the, the thread. Like if I post a toy or something like that, you know, or a movie or whatever, it's like, you see me on the feed, but in the stories though, you'll, sometimes you'll get me, but usually you'll get blue, uh, talking shit about work and he's not really i mean he's just he's a little competitive with work he wants us to be the best and that's why i think because of that effort is why we got promoted at the job is like i've always worked really hard at harley but man oh man the stories i could tell you about how i got overlooked and ignored um and how my hard work was not appreciated by anybody um except for people in other departments who came to my rescue and wrote me letters or recommendations and really push for me, try to get promoted and then nothing. And then I had to go to another location and I was about ready to give up. I was like, you know what? I'll work here for like a month or so and I'm just to find another job and then I'm, I'm done. But then Blue was like, no, we can do this and just give me the job. And I said, and Blue was like, you need to be focusing on writing. You need to get Neverland done. You need to get your videos you know, back on track. You need to get your, your script that you're doing for Mark Poulton done. You need to be doing that stuff and we'll, we'll take care of the work. The downside is, is we're not physically two people. So it's not like he can go to work and work eight hours and I can be here eight hours doing my thing. He's at work and I'm not around. I'm, I'm asleep or whatever. And then he comes home and walks ace and then there's a transition. And then I'll sit at the computer and work, but I can't work past a certain time some days because Blue has to work the next day. And we've already seen what it's like to exhaust ourselves physically um when all three of us are fronting you know con- consistently so we're we're trying to get it to where we're not pushing ourselves to to exhaustion so anyway um but yeah hopefully i answered a lot of those questions um and uh, and if you got more you know we can maybe do another one of these in, a, in the future not the next live one the next live one we'll probably talk about movies and and, and uh, warner brothers and stuff like that uh we'll probably i'm gonna wait like a week to see what other news comes out for ezra miller and other things uh warner brothers related and then maybe next friday we'll do another live stream where we talk about all that stuff um because i have a lot of opinions about it for sure and then uh and then yeah thanks for checking out the room tour with me maybe i'll do another edited one at some point down the road but i think hopefully this service that you know i don't want to make too many room tour videos um i want to get back to making fun content too so um i'll get started right after i end this live stream so thank you all so much for watching i really do appreciate it thanks for the likes anyone who pops in later thank you for uh hanging out with us having this conversation with us that we had today and if you have questions you know let me know down in the comments and i'll respond uh, the best i can thank you so much i'll see you all in the future ilnova thank you man thank you thank you thank you thanks for being a fan and always being here since the beginning it means the world to me man you have a good one peace